And but I knew, you know, after I started taking more than four, and I was taking five, six, seven, eight, I knew I wasn't doing the right thing. I knew that I was going against what the doctors wanted. Because yeah. uh, you know what I would do? I I literally I had twelve doctors that I was calling. Oh. Okay. So, I, and I had 12 different pharmacies because you can't go to the same pharmacy twice in one month. Oh my God. Okay. And, and then I had a Mexican uh, contact where I got them illegally. So oh, I was boy. getting about 2,700 pills a month. Oh my God. That, that, that is, that. I, oh and my you know what? God. That's all you think about. That's all you think about is how you're going to get your drug the next time. So I have this calendar, and every day it tells me which doctor to contact or contact your Mexican uh, c- contact down in Mexico. Uh, so I have all these things set up so that I can get what I need. And, and it, it takes over your life. Wow. You no longer are living your life. You, your marriage, is, you know, you're not worried about your marriage, your kids, your job, nothing. You're just worried about how you're going to get the drugs. God. Yeah. It's it's very weird. It's they, very weird that they allow them to. I mean, it's just it's evil. It's really evil. They ruined the lives of untold millions of people. I don't know if I could ever do something like that. Of course you couldn't. Of could course, you come couldn't. up with something that I no. know people are going to get addicted to and I think and lie to them. I one mean, of those things where you become accustomed to it because everyone like you is doing it, and it mm-hmm. becomes part of what you do. You know, I think it's just people adapt to whatever environment they're in. And if your environment is in getting pills to people, that's your job. Mm-hmm. Your job is to get pills to people. Right. The pharmaceutical drug reps, they come to you. I mean, that's all they're thinking of. Yeah. How I get my pills. To yeah. yeah. I just, that's what your job is. Your yeah. job is to do that. Your job is not to like help these people. I mean, there was a one doctor in the series that was like an ethical doctor that kicked the lady out of his clinic. He's like, mm. get the fuck out of here. You're selling heroin. Wow. It's it's an interesting scene because like there's it, that's rare because I this is how naive I was I didn't even know that most hospitals are privately owned like I didn't know that they were for profit businesses to try to push medic medicine on people I, didn't I know thought either. they're just here to help you yeah like wouldn't that be the best thing like if hospitals were just places where the doctors get paid well because they're really good at their job but yeah. what they're trying to do is make you better. No, those hospitals are trying to make as much money as possible. They want to keep you in as much as possible, prescribe as much medication as possible. It's like... <laughs> you know what? I'll give you an example of that. It's not really drug-related, but <clears throat> I went to the hospital. I had pneumonia, and uh, they um, they accidentally gave me the hospital bill of everything that they used on me. And uh, all my, like, like if I had, like, a, a ginger ale, diet ginger ale, it was a little six-ounce, those little ones. Um, I had like uh, 20 of them while I was there. They were charging $12 for each one of those. <laughs> they they had on the bill like uh, the the linen, what the linen costs, and this and that. Linen was $200, just the bed sheets. Wow. Like it, like they, I saw all this stuff on this bill. The bill ended up being for five days. It was $165,000. Wow. How could you spend $165,000 just laying in a hospital bed? You know, they're serving you three meals a day. Oil. Yeah. That's it. I mean, one hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. It's ridiculous. When you look back on it now, is there anything you would have changed? Uh, well, throughout my career, was there anything that I would change? Yeah. Well, uh, we'll get into this topic, I guess. Um, after I broke my neck the second time, the first time in WWE, I was introduced to painkillers, and. Uh, mm. uh, when I started taking them, I, I really liked it. I mean, it, 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 it masked the pain. I couldn't feel the pain. It kind of gave me an energetic feel. Uh, it didn't make me feel nauseous like it does a lot of people. And I started taking I was taking one every four to six hours, like I was told. But after a while, you build a tolerance, and one doesn't work anymore. Then you have to take two, and two led to four, four was led this to Oxycontins? eight. Oxycontins? Uh, this was extra strength Vicodin. The Oxycontins are a lot more powerful than the Vicodin. But I was taking 65 extra drink Vicodin a day. Whoa. That's how out of control I got. And I was hiding it from the company. And, and I mean, it was, I was in serious trouble. It, um, you know, I, I'll give you an example. I, I, um, there was one point, that, this is how, it, how bad it got. Um, there was one point in my career where uh, I, uh, my brother called me. I was at a house show, an untelevised show for WWE. It was the night before I was going to have the biggest match of my career with Brock Lesnar the next day. It was an Iron Man match on SmackDown. And um, my brother calls me and says, hey, your sister just died of a heroin overdose. 
and it it crushed me. I mean, I I, I was I was crying. I, I was in such pain thinking about my sister who was only 40 years old, dying from a heroin overdose. And the thing is, I wasn't able to talk to her because I told her eight months prior, if she doesn't get clean, I'm gonna um I'm not gonna talk to you. So I didn't talk to her for eight months, and then this happens. Oh. And I was, so here I am, I'm in the hotel room, and I look at my pills, I said, fuck it. I took 20 of them, threw them in my mouth, chewed them up, and swallowed them. Oh, my God. I didn't wake up till 5 o'clock in the afternoon the next day. And I had the biggest match of my career. Oh, my that God. That night. So what yeah. time did you have to be to the arena, and did you do well, it? Well, we had to be there at 1, but I didn't get there till 5.30. Right. Yeah. So I, I went ahead and did it. And it was actually one of my best performances of my career, which is kind of crazy. But uh, that was that was a really rough time. And the painkillers are the one thing that I do regret I did in the company. I wish I was never introduced to them. But do you think you had to take them? I mean, it sounds like you were in such excruciating pain all the time. There were times I needed to take them, and there were times I didn't. But I was so far deep into it that i yeah. had to i mean I, i'm not gonna lie to you I, I would go to sleep at night i would have 15 pills sitting on the desk next to me for when i wake up because i knew i was gonna have withdrawal when i got up i wake up sweating shaking and i grab those throw them in my mouth chew them up and swallow 15 at a time 15 at a time wow yeah most people 15 at a time will kill you <laughs> well right? they killed me how'd you get off of them <sighs> okay uh well what happened was I left the WWE because they wanted me to go to rehab. I didn't want to go. So I ended up going to another company called Impact Wrestling. And I, I got my painkiller problem under control there because I, got, I found a doctor that got me on MS Cotton. There are two um, um, uh, morphine pills. They're very tiny, but they, they'll keep you from going through withdrawal. So I would take one in the morning, one at night, and no more painkillers. They were painkillers because they were morphine, but they were high dose. It was just two of them that I had to take. Well, I started having anxiety about breaking my neck over and over again, so they, they put me on Xanax. Oh, geez. So now I'm taking Xanax. And then I, I switched to, to TNA, Impact Wrestling, and everybody drank there, so I started drinking alcohol. So I'm mixing, having these t cocktails, and I'm, I'm so out of control that I'm driving, okay, from town to town, drinking a 12-pack of beer, and I got four DUIs in five years. Oh my I God. lost my reputation, everything I worked for. I was at the lowest point in my life. And uh, I remember calling my wife from jail after my fourth DUI, and she said, listen, I can't do this anymore. You either go to rehab or I'm taking the kids and I'm leaving. And I, So I went to rehab because I didn't want to lose my wife and my kids. 